Hey folks, if you'd like to support me or this channel, Moose University, in creating more video tutorials, then please consider making a financial contribution at my website, MoofUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy the video. Okay, in this video I want to talk about free fatty acids and a little bit about their nomenclature and conventions, typical conventions. Now, in biochemistry and in biology, we often use what's called the common names, which I will abbreviate in CN or as CN. Whereas there are also systematic names, which I will abbreviate SN, that are often used in organic chemistry. And that's basically based on the carboxylic acid naming system. So normally common names are used, but systematic names can be helpful in understanding what's going on with the nomenclature and conventions. Okay, let's start off with our first example. If we have a saturated 18 carbon fatty acid. The convention is 18 colon 0. So what do those two numbers tell us? The first number, 18, tells us how many carbons are in the fatty acid chain. So it's the number of carbons. The second number, what does the second number tell us? The second number tells us the number of double bonds, specifically the number of carbon-carbon double bonds, right? Carbon-carbon, because we can't think about the, um, the, the double bond, the carbonyl double bond. Right, and so this is saturated. So we already knew, like even if they didn't tell us that zero part, we know that it's saturated. But if they didn't tell us saturated 18 carbon fatty acid, we should be able to tell from 18 colon zero that if it has zero double bonds or zero carbon carbon double bonds, then it's a saturated fatty acid that we're thinking about. So I've drawn that down here. This is an 18 carbon fatty acid, saturated. Okay, carbons one. Now some people. For whatever reason, they sometimes forget about the carbonyl carbon as being one of the, the carbons in the chain. So that's the first carbon, and it will be numbered in this way, carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 18. Okay, now this 18 carbon saturated fatty acid has a name. Its common name is stearic acid, or stearate. Okay, now um, uh, which of these is actually correct or completely correct? Um, they're both correct, but the, the, the actual name of this one, because it's deprotonated, it's not actually an acid anymore, right? It's the conjugate base. So stearic acid would refer to this, this carboxyl group being protonated, and stearate is actually what I've drawn because it is deprotonated. Now, what is the systematic name? The systematic name is N-octadecanoic acid or N-octadecanoate, okay? So what is that basically telling us? Well, the octa, octa means 8, dec, dec means 10. So that's where the 18 comes from, right? 18 carbons. And then the N refers to the fact that it's basically an alkane, right? There's no double bonds. So it's the same thing over here, octa, octa, dec, can. So an 18 carbon alkane, alkane uh, carboxylic acid. Right, so it's just an alkyl group, no double bonds, right? All single bonds, uh, and the N refers to normal. So that's basically telling you that you have a straight chain. Okay, now I'm going to kill these numbers for a second and talk about these carbons that I've labeled here. On the bottom left, I'm pointing to the first carbon, carbon number one. That is the carbonyl carbon. Carbonyl carbon or you can call it the carboxyl carbon. Now both are correct. It's a carbonyl because it's a C double bond O, but it's a specific type of carbonyl because it's involved in the carboxyl chain or, or carboxylic acid functional group or carboxylate since it's deprotonated. So it's also called the carboxyl carbon. And that's probably more specific and probably more correct, but both are, both are not incorrect, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, Okay, so now that we have that, that first carbon, the one that's immediately adjacent to the carbonyl carbon, the one here labeled with this blue arrow, is the alpha carbon, the Greek letter alpha. The next one would be beta, and those are the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. You could go on further and say that the next one is gamma, the, next one, the one after that is delta, so on and so forth, but normally we don't really go farther than alpha or beta. Um, and the reason why this is important, or well, one particular example of why it's important, is that there's this process called beta oxidation, which is the process that 
um, oxidizes the beta carbon and breaks down fatty acids for energy. I actually have a video describing that. I might put up an annotation here uh, if you want to watch that video. Uh, but that's why understanding the convention is important. Now, I did, I just said that this, you, you could call this the alpha, beta, gamma, delta carbons, so on and so forth. But like I said, normally we don't go further than beta. However, if we go to the very end of a chain, so in this case it would be the 18th carbon, right? The very end of the chain, that last carbon somehow, sometimes has, has a name, um, or has a convention. And that carbon is, is called the omega carbon. Omega looks like a little W. Um, that is the Greek letter omega. And omega is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. So here it's the last carbon in the fatty acid chain. So that is the omega carbon. Why is that important? Well, let's look at this here. Got a little clinical correlate here. This is representative of some fatty acid, where we have a carbonyl carbon, and then this here. I put a parenthesis around this second carbon. Uh, and then put N, because it can be however many carbons long. But we're mainly going to think about the last carbons, the carbons at the end of the chain. That last one will be the omega carbon. And if we start the numbering at that, that last carbon, at the omega carbon, we call that carbon carbon number one. We can't call it carbon number one, because we saw that the carbonyl carbon is actually number one. So, But what we can do is we can call that carbon omega one, and then start the numbering from there. So we'll get omega-1, omega-2, omega-3, omega-4. And if we have a double bond between carbons uh, omega-3 and omega-4, we have what's called an omega-3 fatty acid. And some of you might have heard of those. They are often talked about as being pretty important or in helping to reduce the risk of heart disease. And so some people will actually take fish oil as a supplement or they'll take omega-3 fatty acids as supplements um, and to and then it'll t to sort of help with reducing the risk of heart disease. Two examples are icosopentaenoic acid and hexaenoic acid. Um, those are two examples, and I think those are prevalent fish oils. So if you ever wondered why people take them as a supplement, it's uh, because they, there, there's, there are indications that these things help reducing the risk of heart disease. Now that... I'm not over here trying to give you advice on taking supplements. Um, I'm just looking at this purely academically. If you're interested in supplementation and you're concerned at all, those will probably be good questions to ask your doctor. Anyway, on to the next one. Next example. We have an, the next example is an unsaturated 18 carbon fatty acid. Okay, so 18 colon 1. 18, so we have 18 carbons. 1, 1 carbon carbon double bond. Okay, cool. Now, the question is, where is this double bond? There are 18 carbons. How do I know which carbons it's between? Well, I've drawn two things here. I've drawn, I've drawn these two fatty acids, and I've drawn the double bond between carbons 9 and 10 in both cases. Over here, though, it was cis, and over here, it's trans. So now, I'm telling you that I already knew that the double bond was between 9 and 10. But this convention here didn't tell me that. This convention didn't tell me that. It just told me that I have one carbon-carbon double bond in the chain. By the way, that means that I have a MUFA, right? A monounsaturated fatty acid. But I didn't know where the... I, you can't really know from this convention where the double bond is. So let's look at these names and see if those tell us anything. The common name, or common names, oleic acid or oleate. And of course, I've drawn the oleate here, right, because it's deprotonated, um, but I still don't know, the oleic acid or oleate, the common name doesn't tell me where this double bond is, it also doesn't tell me about the nature of the double bond, is it cis, like it is in this case, or trans in this case, how do I know, I don't know, nothing, nothing yet has told me, what if I look at the systematic name, so the systematic name says cis delta 9 octadecanoic acid, or cis-delta-9-octadecanoate. This is where we're getting, getting to the good stuff. Okay? So let's, let's talk about the, the, the stuff that should be pretty clear. So octadec, that's going to tell us the 18 carbons, right? So that's something we already saw in the previous example. 
Something that's different here, though, is that we've got this little een instead of an. Instead of decanoic or decanoate, it's decene. So that's telling us that we have an alkene, which is a double bond, right? Carbon, carbon, double bond. So that's something new. Also, it's telling us that we have cis, a cis double bond. So we already know that this one's not right. And we know that the double bond specifically is going to be delta 9. What that means is that the double bond starts at carbon number 9 and goes to carbon number 10. So we have a double bond between carbons 9 and 10, and it's a cis double bond. So this is the correct structure. Okay. So this is oleate, or oleic acid, or cis delta 9 octadecanoate or octadecanoic acid, okay, or specifically this one, right, because it's deprotonated. But notice how I broke down that name. I got the ene part, I got an alkene, so I got a double bond. Um, I got octadec, 18 carbons. Delta 9, the double bond, is starting at carbon number 9 and going to the next carbon, carbon number 10. And then cis is telling me that of the geometry of that, the, uh, the, the, the double bond. So I know that this is the correct structure. That is oleic acid or oleate. And notice that it is um, unsaturated and it's kinked, right? It has this little bend, right? Or kink. Because of the nature of cis double bonds. Whereas the trans one, of course, is straight. And that's something we talked about in the previous video. Okay, let's kill these numbers and then move on to the next example. Next example is an example is a an unsaturated 18 carbon fatty acid. So I didn't put 18 carbons here. It's an unsaturated fatty acid that is 18, 2. So that means we got 18 carbons and we've got two carbon carbon double bonds. So I've already drawn it correctly here, but I want to show you, just as a further example, that the common names don't tell us anything about where these double bonds are, right? Linoleic acid, linoleate. The heck? That doesn't tell me anything, right? Where, where is. Where is the double bond? Well, I don't know. Okay, I've drawn here the two double bonds are between carbons nine and ten and twelve and thirteen. Okay, and that's something the systematic name tells us. Okay, so now I'm gonna, there's something a little bit different about this one in terms of what it tells us. So again, octadec, octadec, eighteen carbons. Now, octadeca or octadec. Now We've got here, instead of ene, we've got diene. Diene. So there's two alkenes, right? Two carbon carbon double bonds. Diene. Where are they? They start at carbons number 9 and start at number car carbons number 12. So between 9 and 10 and between 12 and 13. And are they cis or trans? Cis, cis. Systematic names are wonderful. They tell you every single bit of information that you need to know about it. So if you can familiarize yourself with these systematic names, or at least work through them, then drawing these fatty acids, especially if you have to memorize them for a course you're taking, it, it, it would make a lot of sense to, to understand systematic naming to help you draw these and remember them as opposed to just memorizing them. Understand, don't memorize. Words to live by. Anyway, so when I drew this, I just started drawing a straight chain a straight saturated chain, but then when I got to carbon number nine, I knew that I'd have a double bond there, so I, I drew it straight across, right? And then I put the double bond there, and then I went, then I continued drawing it as if it was a saturated fatty acid, and when I got back to 12, I drew another double bond, and then drew the rest of it as if it were saturated. So after that, though, um, I realized that this is going to cause some kink action, right? So we've got a kink here at this double bond, and we've got another kink here, okay? And so in this case, we've got more than one carbon carbon double bond, right, in this structure. So we've got a PUFA, a polyunsaturated fatty acid, as opposed to the monounsaturated fatty acid that we just drew in example two. So I hope that was helpful. Now, I do have a list here of some other some other uh, fatty acids that I encourage you to draw or try to draw on your own. It could be uh, good practice. So here we've got um, 16 0, that's palmitate, or N hexadecanoate, right? Hexadec 16, N alkane, right? 
um, normal straight chain. That one should be pretty easy. Uh, palmitoleate, 16, 1. So it's got one carbon to carbon double bond. It's a cis double bond starting at carbon number 9. So hexadecanoate, the ene, of course, alkene. Linoleate, oh, excuse me, not the lino linoleate. We just drew linoleate. This is linolenate. So it's got 18 and 3. So it's got three double bonds, three carbon carbon double bonds. And they're all cis starting at carbons 9, 12, and 15. So between 9 and 10, 12 and 13. Uh, 15 and 16, and notice this is octadec, trienoate, trienoate, so three enes, three alkenes, okay. arachidate, 20 carbons, zero, zero uh, carbon carbon double bonds, systematic name N icosinoate, okay, so the, the icos, that's, that's, that refers to 20 carbons, that's kind of weird, but that's what that refers to, okay, this last one here, 20 and 4, um, arachidonate, it's got all cis double bonds, it's got four of them, so four of them is tetra, tetraene, right, and of course I drew them, I wrote them all here as 08, 08, 08, 08, 08, and that's because, um, again, most fatty acids typically exist in their deprotonated form, so I didn't put the, the, uh, oic acid name here, uh, just also for the sake of space. Um, but a well, fun fact is that arachidonate is a 20-carbon uh, fatty acid with these four uh, double bonds, and it's a precursor molecule in synthesizing the icosanoids. Icosanoids are these 20-carbon signaling molecules that I may or may not make a video on anytime soon, but uh, they can be important when you study um, uh, signaling pathways. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful in kind of understanding what's going on with the naming and the conventions when it comes to fatty acids. And if you have to memorize any of these for any exam that you're taking, I strongly encourage you to really think about these systematic names. Look them up if you have to and try practicing uh, just the drawing of them. And hopefully you can sort of remember how to draw them as opposed to simply just looking at it, memorizing it, and trying to draw it over and over and over without thinking really through what's going on with the name. Um, yeah, so I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Yo, if you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more content. And if you know anybody who might find the videos helpful, then please share it with them. Thanks. Happy studying.